Entropic just introduced the ability to do function calling or use external tools with Cloud3 family of models. In this video, we're going to look at what tools actually are, how do they work, how do you define your own tools, what are some best practices around tool usage and function calling, and at the end, we're going to look at a practical example of how function calling works with Cloud3. But first, let's understand why you need function calling or external tool usage. So by their nature, the LLMs have certain limitations. For example, most of the LLMs that we have seen are not good at doing mathematics or calculations, or each LLM has a certain cutoff training date beyond which it's not going to have any access to the data. So you probably need to do a web search to augment the LLM when it's generating responses. So for that, you give the LLM the ability to use these external tools or do a function calling to specific function which implements this functionality. So with function calling, here is how the flow works. Whenever there is a query from the user, the LLM will look at uh, the available tools and it will decide whether it needs to use a tool or not. If it doesn't need a tool, then it will use its internal training data to generate a response. Now, if it determines that it needs to use a tool, for example, if it has to do certain calculations and it decides that I need a calculator, then the first phase is that um, among the available tools, it needs to determine which tool to use. So let's say if it was supposed to do calculation, it will pick a calculator if it's looking for a weather condition, it probably is going to pick a, a, a web search, right? So first it needs to determine which tool to use, and then it needs to uh, make a call to that tool. So it could be a simple API or an external function that implements the tool uh, usage, right? And then it will get a response from this function or the API call that is going to be sent to the LLM uh, as a context uh, along with the query and the LLM is going to generate a response. Okay, so this is how the general function calling flow works. Now let's look at specifics of Cloud3 family. Okay, so let's look at how you define tools. So uh, this functionality is in a beta. That's why uh, whenever you use the Anthropic client, we're going to be using a beta rather than uh, the normal client, right? Uh, but I think it's a pretty mature at the moment. Now let's look at the tool definition. There are two components. One is this description based on which the cloud will decide which tool to use. And the second one is the actual implementation, which can be an external API or a, an external function. And we're going to look at that in more details when we're looking at the example. So each tool needs to have a name, then a very detailed description. You want to make sure to provide as much details as possible in the description, because this description is used by Cloud family to determine which tool to use. Then there is an input schema. And so this basically determines what inputs are going to be required from the user. So let's look at this example. In this case, the user query is what is the weather like in San Francisco? So based on this uh, query, if Cloud decide to use this tool, which is the get weather, then it needs to figure out location um, as a required field. So the location we already know uh, from the user query, right? And that location is going to be then passed on to the actual external API or the function uh, which will return uh, the, the weather for that location. Now this will uh, become a lot clearer when we look at an example, but uh, in terms of the best practices, you want to make sure the description is highly detailed. So you need to provide details regarding what the tool does, when it should be used, if there are uh, multiple tools, right? what each parameter means and how it affects the tool behavior and any important caveats or limitations such as 
what information the tool does not return if the tool name is unclear. This is extremely important because based on the description alone, uh, Cloud will decide which tool to use. Okay, so let's look at an example. This is based on the cookbook provided by the Anthropic team. So we're going to be building a customer uh, service agent when, with uh, client-side tools. So this is basically a customer service chatbot using Cloud 3. And this chatbot will have the functionality to search for customer data, pull up details of orders, and even cancel orders for the customers. So this will need three different tools. One is search for customer data. Then uh, we need another tool for uh, pulling up details of the orders, and then another tool that has the ability to cancel orders for the customer. Now to get started, we're going to install the Anthropic package. This is the uh, Python client. Next, we need to set up the Anthropic API key. Uh, since I'm using a Google Colab notebook, I set this up as a secret here. But if you are using this on your own machine, uh, you can just set this up directly. I'll put a link to this um, notebook in the video description. Next, we need to uh, set which model we want to use. So for this specific example, I'm using the Cloud3 Opus. However, uh, this will also work with uh, the Cloud3 Haiku as well. If you have simpler uh, tools that you want to use, I think Haiku is good enough. For a more complex scenario, uh, uh, you want to use Opus, specifically if there are multiple tools that need to be called in certain order. So for example, if there is a serialized calling or chaining of tools, then you definitely want to use Opus. Okay, so let's look at the uh, client side tools or details. As I said, there are three different tools. One is uh, we're going to use to get customer info. The second tool is to get uh, order details. And the third tool is to cancel orders. Now, for each of the tools, you need to provide detailed description. Uh, so for example, that's the first one. This is the second one, which retrieves the details of a specific order based on the order ID, right? So the first tool needs customer ID as an input. The second tool needs the order ID as an input. And the third tool also needs customer, uh, sorry, the order ID, because we're using this to cancel orders. So based on the user input, uh, the model has to decide which tool to use. And that is based on the description in here. However, the actual usage is going to be separate. That usage is implemented through uh, external functions. So we have a get customer info function, then get uh, order details function, and then cancel order, right? and these have their own implementations. So based on the first step, the uh, um, LLM will decide which tool to use, and then it has to make a call to the specific tool, right? So you need both of those uh, parts. First is the definition of tools, and then the second is actual implementation of the tool usage. Okay, so now the, once the LLM decide which tool to use, we are going to simply get this um, function name, right? And then we use this function to uh, do the actual function calling. So for example, if the LLM decides that it needs the uh, customer info, so we will uh, call the get customer info function. Uh, if we need the order details, so we'll call this get order details function. Or if we want to cancel the order, so we're going to call this function. Okay, so this implements the main loop of how the function calling works. So I'll just quickly walk you through this. So first we get a uh, message from the user. Then uh, since we want to uh, use external function, uh, so we are using this uh, beta.tools.messages.create. So basically we uh, pass on the user message to the LLM, right? Here uh, it needs to determine whether uh, it will use an external tool or not, right? Now, if it decides to use a tool, then it will stop the response. And the reason uh, for response stoppage is going to be 
uh, tool underscore use, right? So let's say it, it decides to use an external tool, then it kind of goes through this whole uh, cycle of uh, determining which tool to use. Uh, then once the, use, the tool is selected, that is passed on to this process tool call, which is basically the function that we defined in here, right? That will uh, give us the results. That result is dumped into a JSON passed on uh, to the LLM again, right? Along with the uh, initial user uh, input or query, uh, plus the details of the response from the tool or the function calling, right? And the model will generate another response for us. So basically it implements this whole loop where it decides to use an external tool, pick up the tool, make a function call, get the response, feed that back into the LLM along with the initial query and get a response. Now, in order to test it, so here was a query. Can you tell me uh, the email address for the customer C1, right? So here is basically all the steps that uh, the LLM has to take. So first, uh, it determines that it wants to use an external tool. That's why uh, the uh, stop reason is use external tool. And it determines that to retrieve the customer's email address, the get customer function uh, should be used, right? So it makes a call to that function, gets the return, like uh, gets the results. Those results are feed in back to the LLM along with the initial query. And based on that, you get a response. Now, similarly, if you say, what is the status of order two, then it has to go through uh, a very similar uh, steps. And then here it determines that in order to get the status of order, it has to use the get order details function, right? It will get the response. And based on the response, it will uh, feed that into the LLM again, right? And here's the final answer that we get from the LLM, right? Similarly, there's a case of uh, please cancel order one, right? So it will follow exactly the same steps. Now, uh, let's say if I say write a Python program that prints numbers zero to 100, since in this case, it doesn't need to use an external tool. So the stop reason is end of the turn because uh, once it evaluates this query from the user, it will determine that I don't really need to use any tool. So it's not going to uh, have stop reason as uh, tool usage, right? And here's the kind of response you can see. It says the user request is to write a Python program that prints the numbers zero to 100. This is a straightforward programming task that does not require uh, any usage of tools, right? So that's why it will completely ignore that and it will write uh, the uh, response or the program. Now in this case, it will simply write um, the program itself and will show the results to the user. Now you can do exactly the same thing with Haiku as well. So I just repeated the same uh, prompt or query with Haiku instead of Opus, we get the same response. Similarly, uh, we can check the tool usage. So this was the same uh, prompt that we I used before, but this time the model is Haiku and we get exactly the same response that we got from Opus. Okay, so this was a quick video on how to uh, start working with tool usage or function calling within Tropic. However, you can do a lot more complex things. For example, you can have uh, sequential tool usage, right? We're going to look at some more advanced conce concepts in uh, upcoming videos. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.